All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. I'm one of your hosts today, Mark Iacobino. I'm joined by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. Vinny, I'm very excited to talk to you today about this movie. I am the movie too. we're discussing today is Look Back. It's a film, an anime film based on the one shot from critically acclaimed manga artist Tatsuki Fujimoto. And it got a limited release nationwide in the U.S., so mm -hmm. we were both lucky enough to go and see it this past weekend. If you were lucky enough to see it, we hope you're checking this out. But if you haven't, we'll give you a non-spoiler review, and whenever it does come to streaming or wherever it lands, check it out, and then come back, and we'll talk to you guys about the spoiler ending that we'll, we'll talk about a bit later. Um, Fujimoto is obviously known for Chainsaw Man and Fire Punch, very mm -hmm. violent, dark manga, mm -hmm. but... This is completely different. It's a very intimate story about art. I mean, it really it, at its core is, you know, why do we create art? What are people's mm -hmm. motivations to create art? And as someone who's not in the arts as, as a profession, it still spoke to me. I think mm -hmm. its themes are universal and I love it for that. Um, I love the ending, how it's very much up to the audience to decide what it meant uh, and the relationship between these two main characters, uh, Fujino and Kiyomoto, is just beautiful. It's a it's a less is more relationship. There's not a ton of dialogue between them, but I think the animation, the voice acting, and the music comes together to really showcase their relationship. And the music mm -hmm. is done by um, Hakura Nakamura, uh, who I don't I I'm not familiar with any of his work before this but i am definitely going to check it out after this because it's it's a really beautiful hmm. combination of piano and and uh large orchestration so Vinny, i've been talking a lot you've read the manga yeah, how did you feel yeah. about this adaptation yeah i mean you nailed everything okay there we go head. we'll see you guys I... next time <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of the review it's good it's check it but check it out please like although it was a limited release um it will probably go on streaming soon enough. Yeah. So when it does, like, please, please check this out. It is an incredible film. I was very excited. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think this was one of my most anticipated films of the year because I am such a big Fujimoto fan. I've read every single one of his works since Fire Punch. And I loved this when it first came out in manga form. And seeing the trailer i was very excited it seemed like they were gonna do justice to the source material and they did mm -hmm. uh the source material is very short you know and i was afraid they might punch in a lot of filler but no like i mean um i think for the betterment of this it is very faithful and with that it is a very short film i think it falls just under an hour maybe yeah. like 59 minutes or something and they do justice to this. I mean, you even mentioned the music is so gorgeous and it just elevates that source material. And Fujimoto always had a very cinematic way of storytelling, a very cinematic way of paneling within his manga, which seeing this here and seeing the interpretation that director uh, Kiyotaka uh, Oshiyama takes on this is just beautiful. It's honestly awe-inspiring and... It is incredible, I think, in almost every way. It's mm. it's a it's a simple but sh but beautifully it, simple and short, beautiful story. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I I would say it's probably my favorite animated project of the year so far. I mean, I know we have some heavy yeah. hitters coming out later with Arcane season two, but I think it's gonna be very hard to beat this uh, for me. Um, I think we should give a little background about what the story is. I feel like we oh, yeah, jumped yeah. right in, but. Uh, Essentially, the story follows two middle schoolers, um, both manga artists, both artists in general. Um, and there's a contentious relationship uh, that starts when Fujino uh, notices that there's a new manga artist in school and their art is exponentially better from a objective standpoint. You know, Fujimoto, or, uh, sorry, not Fujimoto, uh, Fujino, which I actually heard that he just split up his name and that's how he got the two main characters yeah. first names which is actually hilarious um but fujino is jealous of this new manga artist uh she has a very like comic-y style compared to this background this beautiful background artist um mm. and there's a uh she goes to her and they form this bond because uh kiyomoto is a, a shut-in but she loves 
Fujino's work and that inspires Fujino to get back into to drawing manga and then they start working together and then they have this really beautiful working relationship together um and what I love about their relationship is it just it goes through all of the stages of you know being an artist probably you know you have the the self-belief component you have the um the jealousy component there's ego involved with it um there's also just the risk of putting yourself out there you know uh Kiyomoto starts out as a shut-in and then mm. she puts her work out there and puts her face out there. Uh, and then just competitive competition, you know, iron sharpening iron, you know, both of them have very different styles, but they both make each other better. And yeah. uh, I just, I, I really loved it. Um, just as someone that isn't in the arts, I just really appreciated it. Yeah. I, to piggyback off of that, I also appreciate the commentary of how obsession and how mm. art can an artist is so fixated on perfection that becomes an obsession. We see that within Fujino on how she so desperately wants to get better at art. She does everything. She just casts away her social life. Everything just locks in for a lack <laughs> of better words into just being a better artist. And then the dynamic between Fujino, who is a very like art, everything, uh, art over everything type of perspective which i can resonate with a as an artist myself but then also kiyomoto who then realizes hey i, I want to do other things in life i want to explore i want to go to university mm -hmm. so then it's that it's that that dichotomy i think within every artist of mm -hmm. like i want to be so good at my art i want to do this so bad i want to but then I also need to live. Yeah. I also need to support myself and I also need to be a social person and et cetera. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's really, I think it's really interesting. I, I took it slightly different. Um, I took Fujino as, I think she does love art, but I yeah. think she loves the attention she gets from her art more than the actual craft of art. Oh, and I think yeah. Kiyomoto loves it for the craft and maybe forgets that art is supposed to be consumed by people and she might not have that relationship with her audience as much as Fujino does, which I think both are valid. One might seem more correct, like Kiyomoto being in it for the love of the game and wanting to go to university. Like she seems like the more outwardly artistic person, but Fujino in her own way is artistic. And I appreciate that because Fujino's style is more comic booky and it seems more amateur it still speaks to people in a different way like kiyomoto like mm -hmm. she sees it and she's like wow this is great and fujina's like oh well it doesn't look that good so it must not be good but uh i appreciate that that conversation with um her audience that she doesn't even recognize in her own art and i think art is subjective and i think it it paints that beautifully but um subtly yeah yeah no i i, I think you put it really excellently there do you want to possibly go into spoilers or? i was gonna do you want to talk about the animation first they're like oh, favorite yeah, cuts yeah, of yes. the animation and yeah. then yeah and then we can get into this ending for sure for sure this yeah, ending we got a lot to talk about <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about that one did you in your screening did they have the post interview yes yeah they had yeah. like a um a featurette with the yeah. with the creators. Yeah. So what I found so fascinating is Oshiyama talks in that interview about how obviously this story is all about manga mm -hmm. and it was a manga and the art direction here wants to portray this almost in a very manga-esque form. So the backgrounds are rarely uh they use 3d elements but they're always drawn over and the lines of the background mm -hmm. to make uh, all the backgrounds look like they were also drawn right and they use a lot of cross hatching here which you see and that's really cool and even there's imperfections that in animation you know they clean up but in here they leave like these sketchy uh, line art sometimes and just imperfections that makes it feel more like a manga mm. than a typical anime and i i thought that was such a cool art direction to go about uh 
I mean, aside from Oshiyama's per, uh, con- contribution, <laughs> right? Um, aside from his doing within this, you also have someone listed here for art direction, uh, Kiyoshi uh, Samjima. So I believe they also had a big part to play within that visual aesthetic of the film, which is just so gorgeous. Mm. Um, yeah. If you yeah. Want to talk I, about that. I, yeah. It's, it's really, I really enjoyed the feature at the end, just getting that inside look into how they created it and why they made those decisions. Uh, what stuck out to me with the animation here was the fluidity of everything, the expressiveness of not just the, the characters' faces in the montages, when usually in a montage, they can kind of just, put whatever they want but they really Mm. focused on getting those emotions correct in the in the montages but i also absolutely loved the they have these top down shots where it zooms down almost like a bird coming down yeah and i feel like that's probably so hard to do drawing and animation and they do it a couple times in this uh the opening shot is like that and then the scene that to me just feels like an instantly iconic like anime scene is when Fujino is skipping home uh, in the rain and she's like splashing up the water and it just it's so the music is beautiful and it's so expressive and it's so exciting to just watch her kind of regain that uh, love for art and she's like I'm gonna go back to drawing and everything and it just felt iconic in the moment Uh, and I think the animation just elevated whatever the source material was Mm -hmm. I hadn't read it but it had to have been great for someone that had had read it before oh yeah i, I you 100 percent agree also you actually reminded me that something i love about fujimoto's art is a how his art like i mentioned is very cinematic it feels as if every panel is almost like a freeze frame from watching a film because mm. he draws faces specifically and how you mentioned the uh, facial emotions Fujimoto draws faces like no one I've ever seen. Like his faces have so much awkward but real emotion to mm. it, right? Because if we were like even uh, if you're watching, <laughs> pause at a random moment within this <laughs> podcast, and you'll realize while humans are talking, it's very weird. I could be, yeah, right. That's true. But it, Fujimoto nails that, mm. and he nails that, and I think that. Oshi, uh, Oshiyama, the director here, as well as the animation crew behind this film, brings that perfectly to life. And yeah, I just really resonated on what you said about the facial emotions because that completely reminded me of, of Fujimoto's work and where he thrives. Mm-hmm. And this film capitalizes on that in a very delightful way. Yeah, so. definitely. Um yeah, I think we can we can move into the, yeah. the ending oh, here. Sorry, oh, oh, actually, before no. before Before another thing I wanted to say, <laughs> uh, the voice cast. Yeah, incredible. Like, uh, obviously, it's a small film. We're only following these two characters. Fujino is played by Yumi Kawai, and Kiyomoto is played by uh, Mizuki Yoshida. Who uh, Kawai? I think this is her first voice acting. I think role. they said that. Yeah. Yeah, and the both of them fit perfectly Mm -hmm. in my opinion like they're they they're just in i wouldn't they just their voice is just perfect it's very natural it's a very natural sounding like conversationally it's not overacted it's very just natural and uh yeah it again it it just elevates the relationship and that's what this film is is built on it's Um, not like a typical anime where it's like super (laughs) right like super like informal and out there no this is it feels grounded Mm -hmm. and i I, that's a testament to the voice actors i think big time big time absolutely all right so we're gonna get into spoilers for the ending so again if you weren't able to see it come back when you do see it whether it's on streaming or if they do get a wider release um we're gonna get into the ending here so the ending is essentially fujino goes to Kiyomoto's old childhood room. Uh, Mm -hmm. Kiyomoto was unfortunately killed in a uh, terroristic attack by uh, another student at her college while she was there. Um, Over jealousy, someone copied his art. Um, Again, a very sobering moment in the film because it's very, it it touches, you know, a real life type of uh, 
event that you know we we see a lot unfortunately in mm. schools and violence in schools and um it's showcased here we don't see anything which was surprising for me because fujimoto is definitely a very violence forward um artist and i i wasn't sure if the film would would do that or not but they didn't um it's just very much implied what happened so fujino goes to um kiyomoto's room she is going through her old things she sees this the original four shot manga that originally uh pushed Kiyomoto to leave the room and, and come back into the world and work together with her. Uh, and then Fujino blames herself for, you know, letting or for convincing Fuj uh, Kiyomoto to leave her room. And she thinks that she died because she convinced her to leave her room all those years ago to pursue art. Um, so Fujino kind of has this breakdown. Uh, and then we get this moment where the panel falls under the door and we get an alternate reality, essentially, that shows... Kiyomoto not leaving her room and because of that she goes to college she goes to art school she survives the attack because Fujino saves her now I have an interpretation of what all of what all this means because then it comes back and Fujino picks up a new panel and there's new drawings on it and then she goes back to work and then so what what is your interpretation I don't want to mm. go with mine up front I want to hear your interpretation of what you think this scene meant and that final shot of her back in her office yeah. with the four panels above her workstation. Yeah, for me, wow, this is going to be hard to put into words. Yeah. Because I, I think this is a story where any interpretation is just as valid as the other. Right. I, I don't think there is like one hailed interpretation over another. But for me, I always looked at it as uh, Kiyomoto had love for fujino no matter what and she created almost as a a tribute to their times back then that alternate reality when in the four panels which it, this is taking in a very literal sense right? right where when it comes underneath the door and fujino sees it on the ground it was from the wind of the 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 open window and it flew in and and uh, almost Kiyomoto made that as, as a tribute to their love of their relationship while they weren't really talking during that time. Right. But you also can look at it as a, ah, wow, this is going to be hard to put in words, but look at it as, as the inner of Fujino's mind. A surreal, and, a surreal, like an, it didn't really happen like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she puts the blank four panels above her work almost as a motive to bring her back to to a grounded reality right. and and almost uh almost of like a remember where you came from type yeah. of deal right and remember the relationship you had with Kiyomoto and that can fuel her art right mm -hmm. it's it's that also that dichotomy of, of of being an artist right where she takes a hiatus she stops doing art she she can't do it be after hearing the news of kiyomoto's death but then what do great artists do they take that pain and they make it into more mm -hmm. art yeah so her taking that four panels and going back to making her her chainsaw man shark manga <laughs> yeah is almost a way of of showing the audience how an artist can take that pain and have to move forward but can bring it into their new art right and keep going you know yeah yeah i definitely um and that's and, and part of that is new from from my interpretation which i really like um my interpretation was yeah it was surreal past the moment where she looked at the original manga panel that got her out of the room um i feel she went into the room she saw that uh kiyomoto had been buying all of her shark manga and she had all the volumes mm -hmm. and read them and was obviously still supporting her work and in that moment you know fujino blamed herself thinking that she hurt Fuji uh kiyomoto by motivating her to leave the room but by kiyomoto still supporting fujino's work it was almost like her talking to her from beyond saying no keep going like you saved me like i was able to experience life because of you and we yeah. had all these moments together um 
And I thought that was just a beautiful way to show it instead of just outright saying like having a note that says, thank you, you know, Fuji Fujino, or just doing it in a very literal sense. Like you said, I appreciate mm. the surrealism. I think it elevates that beyond, beyond life connection that those two have. And I just love the full circle moment that they essentially saved each other. Like, yeah. Fujino saved her from being a shut in her whole life and made her experience the world and take those risks to elevate her art. And Kiyomoto saved Fujino as a as an artist. You know, she reminds her why she's an artist and motivates her to keep feeding her audience and uh, the audience that she has built with this manga that she has. And and I think it's surreal because the manga panel in her eyes is filled in. But then when she brings it back to the office and puts it up, it's blank. So I think she filled it in. Obviously, the manga panel has the is almost predetermined, like the murderer coming to the school, which obviously wouldn't be possible. How should, how would she would know yeah. that? Um, so I think it's just a really beautiful ending that is, again, show don't tell. It doesn't fa force feed you or, or tell you exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, I was kind of like, OK, what just happened? I kind of sat with it through the credits. And then through the Q&A, and I was like, okay, no, I get it. I love it. I appreciate this ending. A couple of people in my theater were not fans of the ending. Really? They didn't get it. Um, they got up, and they were like, yeah, not the best movie. I don't really get that ending, which is oh. unfortunate. It's definitely, if you're going and expecting a straightforward ending, you're not going to get it. But yeah. I think if you sit with it, you appreciate it, and you think about it, and all the themes that they've built up throughout the movie, I think it hits really hard and yeah. it's really beautiful. Yeah, I I a hundred percent agree with that. I think that, like you mentioned, the surrealist take on the ending hits so much better, and it has so much more longevity within a story within a film format as well. Yeah, than having it just be like a note of like yeah. or like a, a written letter mm -hmm. that Kiyomoto was going to send out to Fujino like. Oh, da, da, da. Do you yeah. know right <laughs> now like it gives the audience for the rest of time to talk about this mm -hmm. and this could this discussion can still be going on 30 years from now you know right talking about this film and talking about that ending and it just i think that you know we always hear the the phrase show don't tell within storytelling and the showing here is done excellently it's because if you tell someone a story uh well when you just directly say to the audience how how they're supposed to feel, mm -hmm. how this is supposed to be, it doesn't hit as much as when you just show an audience this image, this image, and then a, contradic a, a contradicting image that creates a juxtaposition into which creates a language that the human humans... We were talking about this on... Uh, what podcast was it last time? Uh, the penguin we're okay, talking about yeah. editing as a yeah. medium right mm -hmm. and how editing is such a simple medium right you take these two images that are completely different there's no words being said and you cut from that to that there is a language that a visual language that we humans understand that is so much more impactful than just regular language right. so that's why i love look back like I, i'm curious other people's interpretations mm -hmm. too aside from just the two of us like I want to hear someone who might have a completely different interpretation of the ending. I think that's what makes the film so beautiful, you know? Right. And and it's still, even, even if you are, let's say you go with someone to the theater and you two have a different interpretation completely, right? The same emotions are there. Yeah. And the film made you feel the same emotions, which is exactly what i think a film and a story is supposed to do definitely yeah and it, you know there's even more interpretations like why is the window open like it, it's another yeah. thing it's like what was going on there so uh yeah i agree it's it's it it keeps the conversation going it's not a hard ending where you know what happened got it leave it alone it's like a crystal it's like inception you know people are still talking about it was it yeah. a dream was yeah. it not a dream like it just makes it more fun. It makes it more of a, a the audience is involved in the story and less of, like you said, the creator just telling you how to feel. So absolutely love the ending. Took a second, but I always appreciate when endings aren't direct. You know, you can think about it. And then when they marinate and you're like, oh, yeah, that was great. And I'm really excited to rewatch this movie, yeah. having the knowledge of the whole movie and just being able to experience it again and seeing the artist's vision um, for a second time through with kind of a new lens. So 
Absolutely. Absolutely loved it. Loved your interpretation. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Do Oh, yeah, it's a movie, so we have to give a score. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, how about you go first? Okay. Oh, uh, ooh. This is going to be hard. Uh, I mentioned this on my Dune review mm-hmm. and my Iron Claw review that mm-hmm. I never out the gate give a film a 10 out of 10 right um i usually like if i'm feeling like it's a 10 i usually give it a nine and then <laughs> i see it again to justify if it should be a 10 out of 10 i think that's nine. totally fair yeah uh so i'm gonna give this i'm gonna give this a solid nine i'm gonna i i don't think it's a solid nine yeah yeah i, th- I i'm also feeling a nine on this too uh I, you know it's not a per like any nothing's really perfect and yeah, um yeah. this spoke to me but again as someone who's not an artist this film wasn't entirely made for me i feel like i might have a different perspective if i was in the arts directly um because it really is focused on 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 that that group of people um but yeah i think a nine is totally fair for this i think it's going to be very hard for another animated film to come out this year to beat this mm. uh it's definitely my favorite right now we just uh reviewed wild robot which was also fantastic but yeah. um i do think i walked away liking look back more because i think the reasons we talked about being able to discuss it further i think wild robot was very cut and dry that's what the film was yeah, yeah look back there's more uh more meat on the bones to kind of dig into so that's been our review this yeah. has been a lot of fun Vinny. uh we appreciate you guys sticking around if you did watch the 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 movie and we're able to check out the spoilers we want to hear your interpretation so drop those in the comments below you can follow us on all of our social medias they're going to be linked right here they're going to be in the description below um we appreciate you being here we're going to obviously continue to talk about animation moving forward we're talking mm-hmm. we talked about wild robot we're talking about Uzumaki. We're talking about Don Don. Vinny just did a review of Don Don recently. So please come on back and listen to more of our discussions about any and all animation. And then yeah. if you're into live action, we're talking about that too with, with the Penguin and Joker and, and all that stuff. So signing off, I'm Mark Iacobino. And I'm Vinny Albano. Thanks for watching. This is The Culture.